Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 24th of May 2022. Let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. Which of the following are the features of cast topography? Number 1. Ponor Number 2. Cave-in section Number 3. Sinkholes Number 4. Uvalas why this question? This article in the Indian Express newspaper today talks about a discovery of a primitive forest in China. See, this has been discovered under a giant cast sinkhole in Lei County. The sinkhole has three big caves in the walls and its bottom has a well-preserved primitive forest. So what exactly are these sinkholes? Sinkholes are depressions that are formed in the ground when the layers of earth surface start collapsing into caverns. And these sinkholes can be formed due to natural processes and also human activity. So typically sinkholes form in the areas of caste terrains. Now this brings us to the topic caste topography. See caste topography is the formation of landforms due to solution and deposition on any limestone by the action of groundwater or surface water. Cast topography will be found in such regions which will have a large stretch of water-soluble rocks such as limestones at the surface or subsurface levels. Now talking about the features of cast topography, abundant rainfall, carbonate-rich rocks and caves are all the features of cast topography. Now coming back to our question, the question also talks about the features of cast topography. Number one is Ponor. What is Ponor? It is a steep-sided sinkhole. It is the natural opening where surface water enters into ground passages and they are found in cast landscapes. So number one is correct. Now, due to the erosion that is caused by either running water or surface water, a cavity is formed in the rock and this cavity transforms into a cave. So cave in section is also a feature of cast topography. Coming to sinkholes. Sinkhole is one of the most common features of cast topography. It is a depression on the limestone. So number three is also correct. These sinkholes can be of different shapes such as funnel shaped, cylindrical pipe or also saucer shaped. Now, uvalas are closed cast depressions. They are bigger in size than sinkholes. So, it is a complex dose depression with several lesser depressions within its rim. So, here 4 is also a feature of cast topography. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements is or are correct? Number 1. Indian Gas Exchange is India's first automated national level gas exchange for trading in natural gas in the country. Number 2. The exchange operates under the regulatory framework of Energy Regulatory Commission. Number 3. Gale India Limited is the first exploration and production company in India to trade domestic gas on IGX. What is the context? According to this article in the PIB today, ONGC has become the first Indian exploration and production company to trade domestic gas on IGX or Indian Gas Exchange. See, IGX is India's first automated national level gas exchange, right? And this functions under the regulatory frameworks of Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board. Now coming back to our question. So statement number one here is correct. Statement number 2 is incorrect because IGX functions under the regulatory framework of Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board. And statement number 3 is also incorrect because it is ONGC which has become the first Indian exploration and production company to trade domestic gas on Indian gas exchange. So 1 is the only correct statement, therefore the right answer here would be option C. Moving on to question number 3. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? Number 1. Vitamin D is essential for maintaining calcium homeostasis. Number 2. In humans, vitamin D3 can be produced endogenously in the skin following ultraviolet B or UVB radiation. Number 3. Cancer, Parkinson's disease and dementia are the diseases associated with vitamin D deficiency. Why have we taken up this question? According to an article in the Hindu newspaper, to fight micronutrient malnutrition, scientists have tried to genetically modify tomato plants so that the fruit contains significant amount of provitamin D3. So provitamin D3 is a precursor from which humans can make vitamin D. Let us know more about vitamin D as we discuss the options in our question. 
Statement number one here is correct because vitamin D is needed for a process known as calcium homeostasis. What is calcium homeostasis? It is the maintenance of constant concentration of calcium ions in the body. See, this vitamin D is principal factor that maintains calcium homeostasis. Multiple evidences have suggested that the reason for disturbed calcium balance with age is inadequate vitamin D levels in the elderly. Right? Now coming to statement number 2. Vitamin D3 is the form of vitamin D that can be produced endogenously in the skin following ultraviolet B radiations. And after the production in the skin, vitamin D3 is converted to major circulating form of vitamin D which is 25 hydroxy vitamin D3. So statement number 2 becomes correct. Coming to statement number 3. See, vitamin D is not only critically important for bone health as we just discussed, but it also has multiple other biological functions. And vitamin D deficiency can cause many diseases. Diseases such as the cancer, Parkinson's disease, dementia and also rickets that is caused in children is caused due to vitamin D deficiency. So statement number 3 is also correct. Therefore the right answer to our question would be option D none of the above because the question is asking us for incorrect statements. Moving on to question number 4. Consider the following statements with respect to the investment incentive agreement recently signed between the Indian and the US governments. Number 1. It is the first ever investment incentive agreement signed between India and the US. Number 2. The agreement is a legal requirement for US International Development Finance Corporation to continue providing investment support in India. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? According to this article in the PIB, the government of India and the government of USA have signed an investment incentive agreement at Tokyo in Japan. This investment incentive agreement supersedes the IIA that was signed between India and United States of America in the year 1997. And please remember that this agreement signed recently is a part of the legal requirement for DFC to continue to provide investment support to India. What is this DFC? DFC is a development finance agency of the government of US and it is a successor agency of the erstwhile overseas private investment corporation. Here it's worth noting that proposals of about $4 billion are under consideration by DFC for providing investment support in India. And now this investment incentive agreement has been signed to keep pace with the additional investment support programs that are offered by DFC. For example, debt or equity investment, investment guarantee and also investment insurance or reinsurance. Now coming back to the question, statement number one becomes incorrect. Because another IIA was signed in the year 1997 and the recent one supersedes the one signed between the two countries in 1997. Number 2 becomes correct. This is the legal requirement for DFC to continue providing investment support in India. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option B, 2 only. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2014. There is some concern regarding the nanoparticles of some chemical elements that are used by the industry in the manufacture of various products. Why? Number 1. They can accumulate in the environment and contaminate water and soil. Number 2. They can enter the food chains. Number 3. They can trigger the production of free radicals. See, these nanoparticles are particles with dimensions comparable to 1 by 10 to the power of 9 of a meter. That is 1 divided by 100 crores. And these nanoparticles can also be released in the atmosphere through major natural processes such as the forest fires, volcanic eruptions, dust storms, etc. But nanoparticles of chemical elements have become a major cause of concern. Why? because they accumulate in various environmental matrices such as air, water, soil and also sediments including wastewater sludge. So number one becomes correct. Also these nanoparticles can enter into the food chains and create cumulative poisoning. So number two is also correct. Now coming to statement three. What are free radicals? Free radical is an atom or a group of atoms with at least one unpaired electron. And studies have proved that nanoparticles can trigger production of free radicals. 
Why is it a cause of concern? Because the chronic release of such reactive molecules can lead to tissue degeneration. Therefore, 3 also becomes correct. So, the answer to our question would be option D. 1, 2 and 3. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today which is accredited social health activists or ASHAs. What is the context? According to this article in the Indian Express newspaper today, the World Health Organization has recognized the contribution of India's 1 million ASHAs during COVID-19 pandemic. It has been acknowledged that ASHAs facilitate linking household to health facilities and also they play a pivotal role in initiatives such as house-to-house -house surveys, public health, reproductive and child health measures and also vaccination. First of all, who are ASHAs? See, ASHA workers are basically volunteers and they are from within the community, right? So these health activists are trained to provide information to aid people in accessing benefits of various healthcare schemes of the government. And in many states, ASHAs are involved in the national health programs, right? They are also involved in the response to a range of both communicable as well as non-communicable diseases. So basically, they act as a bridge between marginalized communities and facilities provided by the government such as primary health centers and hospitals. It was first in the year 2005 that their role was first established as a part of the National Rural Health Mission. And please remember that they get performance-based payments and not a fixed salary like the government servants. Now you may ask who can become an ASHA or health activist. So these ASHAs are basically married, widowed or divorced women between the age of 25 to 45 years of age. And like we discussed earlier, they are volunteers from within the community. The basic condition is that they must have good communication skills, they must have leadership skills and should be literate with a formal education up to class 8 as per the program guidelines. What do they do? They go door to door in designated areas creating awareness about basic nutrition, basic hygiene practices and also health services that are made available by the government. And these ASHA workers are also tasked with ensuring and motivating children to get immunization. Also, they are tasked with informing their respective primary health centers of any births or deaths in their designated areas. Now, it has been acknowledged that they played a pivotal role during the COVID-19 pandemic. ASHAs were tasked with motivating people to get their COVID-19 shots and also collect data on how many people are yet to get vaccinated. So, in the backdrop of the pandemic, ASHA workers were a key part of the government's pandemic response. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.